Hello everyone, welcome to GoVM Lab. In this lecture, we are going to learn about how do we go and add our ESXi host to vSphere distributed switch, what we had created in our last lecture. And we'll see that how do we connect their physical adapters to the vSphere distributed switch as a DV uplink. So with that, let's get started. Now, as you could see that we are logged into our vCenter server named as savcsa one govmlab.local and if you do see that we are running a version 7.0 now let's go and browse our vcenter server within that vcenter server we do see a data center created named as sa data center let's go and browse our data center within that data center we do see a cluster created named as sa cluster let's go and browse our cluster within that cluster we do see that there are three esxi hosts added to this cluster and we do have bunch of VMs which are running on that cluster. Before we go and start adding these ESXi host to our vSphere distributed switch, let's have a quick review of our distributed switch. Click on networking icon, click here to browse our data center, click on VDS, that's a distributed switch. What we had created VDS site A, click here to browse this VDS and we do see that there are two port groups created on this distributed switch. The very first port group what we have it is a virtual machine port group named as DVPG VM network and the next port group what we have it is a well-defined DV uplink port group. Now if you do see that currently there are no host added to this distributed switch as you rightly see that it tells us that there is no host which is being managed by this distributed switch and if you look at the virtual machine count that count is also zero which means that there are no virtual machines which have been assigned to this distributed switch so now what we are going to do we are going to add our esxi host to this distributed switch how do we go and do that for that select that distributed switch right click on it and right there we have an option called add and manage host so click on add and manage host and that's where you do see that there is an option called add host now what that option means that option means that whenever we want to add new host to this distributed switch this is the option we should be using it we do have other two options the second option says that manage host networking now what does that mean it means that our host is already added to this distributed switch but we want to manage networking of that specific host which is already attached to this distributed switch in that case we can use manage host networking and the last option is remove host that's a pretty obvious option whenever we want to remove host from this distributed switch we can always go and select that option as of now we are discussing about adding host to our distributed switch so let's go and select add host click on next now that's where we have an option called select host so we have to select the host which we would like to get added to this distributed switch you might have a hundreds of hosts running in your cluster it's not necessarily that you want to add all of the host to the distributed switch you can define that what all the specific host you would like to get managed by this distributed switch and that's where we have an option called new host so select on that new host and that's where you do see that all these three hosts can be added to our vSphere distributed switch. So now let's do one thing. As of now, let's just add these two hosts. The third host we will add it later. So now you do see that out of these three hosts, we are just going to add these two hosts, SA ESXi01 and SA ESXi02 host to our vSphere distributed switch. And if you look at the compatibility, both of these ESXi hosts are in compatible with the distributed switch version. Now, sometimes you might see compatibility status as incompatible whenever you have a mismatch between your VDS version and ESXi host version. From our configuration perspective, everything looks good and our hosts are incompatible with the distributed switch. So we are pretty good from the configuration perspective. Click on OK, click on Next. Now, the next option what we have it is the Manage Fits Manage physical adapters so we would like to get assigned our network adapter to this distributed switch because if you have a switch and it doesn't have a uplink connected to it then how my vms are going to communicate to the external network and that's where we need to assign physical adapters to our distributed switch for the uplink connectivity so that's where we are going to configure 
uh, network adapters for this distributed switch. So now if you do see that, that's our very first host, as you rightly see that, SA ESXi01. And if you remember, we had reviewed about the physical adapters configuration. And this wizard also tells us that VMNIC0 adapter of this particular host is already claimed by vSwitch0. So now obviously we cannot claim VMNIC0 as of now. So we have to choose any of the adapters which is not being claimed by any virtual switch. So what we are going to do, we are going to select VMNIC1 as an adapter and that adapter we are going to use as a DB uplink. So select the VMNIC1, click on assign uplink and that's where we do see that uplink 1 and uplink 2. Because we created distributed switch with only two DB uplinks, that is the reason we only seeing two uplink. Now, if you create a distributed switch with four uplinks or eight uplinks, that's how the uplinks will be listed here. So now as of now, we are just selecting uplink 1, click on OK and if you do see that, it tells us that VMNIC1 adapter of this host have been assigned as a uplink 1. Now let's do the same thing for the other host as well. So we have a other host, what we are trying to add it to our distributed switch is SE ESXi02 host. And if you look at this host also, VMNIC0 adapter is already claimed by vSwitch0. So we are going to use any of the unclaimed adapters and that's where we are going to use VMNIC1. So click on VMNIC1, click on assign uplink and that is also we are going to use as uplink 1. So now if you do see that VMNIC1 adapter of SA ESXi02 host is assigned or configured as a uplink 1 to this distributed switch. Now we are not doing any teaming configuration as of now at our distributed switch level. That is the reason we are not adding more network adapters to our DV uplinks. But if we want, we can always go and select VMNIC2, click on assign uplink and we can always assign VMNIC2 as a uplink 2. So as of now, we are not doing that. Later on, we will be adding these adapters to our distributed switch. So as of now, we are just adding single uplink adapter to each of the ESXi host as a DV uplink. Now click on next. Now the next option says that manage your VM kernel adapters. So what does that mean? It means that how do we want to manage and assign VM kernel adapters which are already created on these two ESXi hosts and how do we want to manage these VM kernel adapters to our distributed switch. So if you do see that our SA ESXi01 host is already having a two VM kernel adapters created VMK0 and VMK1 and if you do remember where we had reviewed the host level configuration both of these adapters were connected to vSwitch 0. And if you see that the very first adapter was used for management network connectivity, that is our VMK0 and VMK1 was used for VM kernel network. So now as of now, these two adapters are connected on our vSwitch 0, which is our standard switch. Now this wizard will define that do we want to migrate these adapters to the distributed switch or not. As of now, it says that by default, do not migrate. What does that mean? It means that please do not make any changes to these VM kernel network adapters and we would like these network adapters to be intact as a part of host addition. So now if you do see that, same thing we do see on the SA ESXi02 host as well. This host is also having two VM kernel adapters, VMK0 and VMK1. VMK0 is connected to the vSwitch 0 and it is actually part of management network port group and if you look at the VMK1 that is also created on vSwitch 0 and it is taking care of vMotion network. So as of now we are not going to migrate these VM kernel adapters to our distributed switch. In the next lecture where we would be discussing about migrating virtual machine to working or these adapters to the distributed switch. As of now we are just learning how do we go and add our ESXi host to the vSphere distributed switch and how do we configure physical adapters as a DV uplink to our distributed switch. So as of now, let's go with the next. And as you do see that currently it says that migrate virtual machine networking, which means that select the virtual machines which we would like to get migrated to this distributed switch. So as of now, we don't want to migrate any of our virtual machines to the distributed switch. So that's all fine. Click on next and now look at that what it says. It says that we are trying to add two ESXi host 
and number of network adapters what we are going to add it as a DB uplinks are two one from each of the ESXi host and that uplink is VMNIC1. So click on finish and we'll see that click on task pane and we'll see that the network configuration has been updated successfully. So now let's minimize this wizard and look at that. Look at the switch details and you will see that the host count has been updated from 0 to 2. Now there are two hosts which has been successfully added to our distributed switch. Now if you do see that the port count has also increased to 12. So let's go and check it out. What are these four additional ports and what are the use for it? So click on ports and look at that. 0 to 7 what we have seen earlier also whenever we create a default distributed switch we were seeing that the switch is created with the 8 DB ports but as soon as we add a host to our distributed switch we do see that there are four additional ports got added to our distributed switch and these four ports 8, 9, 10, 11 are nothing they are DB uplink ports. So if you do see that the port number 8 is actually claimed by uplink 1 the 10th port is also claimed by uplink 1. Now these two uplink 1 is actually are from two different ESXi hosts as you rightly see that. We added VMNIC 1 adapter of both of these ESXi hosts as a uplink 1 and that is the reason we do see that both of these uplink 1s are consuming 8 and 10 port of our distributed switch. If you do see that port number 9 is assigned to uplink 2 and port number 11 and port number 11 is assigned to uplink 2. But as of now, if you remember, we just added one network adapter of each of these hosts as a DV uplink. We have not added other adapters as a DV uplink to our distributed switch. That is the reason we don't see any information about these hosts right there because these DV uplinks are currently does not have any active adapter. But later on, as soon as we go and add an adapter, to this DV uplink 2, we'll see that it, the information will get populated here. Now, here you do see information about the state. So, it says that our uplink 1 of both of these ESXi hosts is in up state, which means that our network adapter is in healthy state. Now, click on that uplink, and once you click on uplink, you will get more information about that uplink port. So, that's a port ID, port ID 8. The name of that uplink is uplink 1, and most importantly, if you look at the connect. TC. It says that VMNIC1 adapter of SAESXI02 host is actually consuming uplink 1 and the DV port 8. And it says that the link status is up, which means that our network adapter is in healthy state. Now you click on policies, and that's where you do see that the port level policies. So you can configure VLAN policies, NetFlow policies, or maybe port level blocking on traffic filtering and marking so traffic filtering and marking another capabilities of vSphere distributed switch we will be discussing about these capabilities in much more in detail in the subsequent lectures but as you could see that you can configure traffic filtering and marking capabilities also at the vds port level and the last option what do we have it is the statistics so as you could see that right there if you want to get the port level statistics we can get the statistics right there from the vCenter UI and you do see that unicast ingress egress packet details broadcast multicast ingress egress packet details and you will also find the packet drop details so this particular counter gets really important whenever we are debugging networking troubleshooting specific issues and if this counter is keep increasing which means that there is some issue with that uplink and that's the reason the drop packet count is keep increasing and that's a very good data point from the debugging perspective we also have a button called auto refresh once you click on auto refresh this counter will be keep updating automatically so now let's click on dvpg port group and if you do see that it gives us a lot more details about that port group so this particular port group is resides on distributed switch vds site a as of now we have not configured any protocol profile or resource pool at the port group level that's the reason we don't see any information here the host count is mentioned as two what does that mean it means this particular port group exists on two ESXi host and that's pretty obvious because we added two ESXi host to our distributed switch and whatever the port groups we have created at the distributed switch level that get pushed to respective ESXi host and that's where we do see the host count as two.
the virtual machines are zero because we have not assigned any virtual machine to this dvpg vm network port group and that's the reason the virtual machine count is zero now if you click on ports you do see that currently there are no active vms which are connected to this particular port group and that is the reason we don't see any connecting information or maybe the state information about these particular ports so these ports are absolutely free as of now now let's go and click on dv uplink port group and as soon as you click on dv uplink port group look at that it actually gives us a filtered information about the ports which are very specific to dv uplinks and if you do see that now it only gives us information about port 8 to 11 because these are the ports of our distributed switch which are very specific to dv uplink and that's where you get the information about your dv uplink which all the hosts are connected to the dv uplinks and that's where you get the state of these uplinks whether these uplinks are in down state or up state and that state gets really important whenever we are debugging network troubleshooting issues because if the link status of this dv uplink is down which means that there is some issue with our physical adapter either our adapter is in bad state or maybe the switch port is down or some issue with the network cable so that's where the link state gets really important when troubleshooting networking specific issues this conclude our lecture on how do we go and add ESXi host to our vSphere distributed switch and how do we connect their physical adapters to our vSphere distributed switch as a DV uplink and we have also seen that how the distributed ports gets allocated and mapped to our DV uplinks of those respective DV uplinks of these respective ESXi host adapter.